Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Jumper T80SG Plus radio transmitter. In this video I'm going to go over its features and I'm going to point out the differences between this version and the previous version that I have, the T8SG V1. Just like the T8SG V1, the T8SG Plus is a multi-protocol remote controller which means you can bind it with many types of receivers. On the back of the box we can see the differences, but actually there are a couple of more differences. So later in this video I'm going to show you a table that points out the differences between the different versions. Inside the box we can find the remote controller, a neck strap, a USB to mini USB cable, a short quick start guide, and also this carrying case which is very convenient and will allow you to safely store your remote controller and you're also getting this spring that will allow you to convert the remote controller between mode 1 and mode 2 and vice versa. Here you can see how the TSSG Plus looks next to the TSSG V1, but it's worth mentioning that this remote controller is not sold anymore and I think that this one used to cost around $75 or $80, whereas this is a more expensive version which costs about $140. So currently there are two remote controllers in the T8SG series in the market, so you can get the advanced version and you can get the plus, and on the following table you will be able to see the differences. So in this table we can find the differences between the T8SG V1, the V2 and the V2 Plus. And even though the T8SG V1 is not sold anymore, it's still worthwhile to mention the differences because maybe you have the first generation and you're thinking about an upgrade. The first difference is that the T8SG V1 is lacking any top switches, so we can see we don't have anything on the top. Whereas on both T8SG Plus and V2, we can find two, two position switches on the top. Next, you can see that the T8SG V1 doesn't have any model bay on the back, whereas it's present on both T8SG Plus and V2, so you can use any JR compatible models, which are the same models that are used on the Taranis. I know that it is possible to use the TBS Crossfire, but I'm not sure if it's 100% compatible and I'm not going to test it in this video. Coming next, on the V1 we don't have any side scroll wheels, whereas we can find them on both V2 and the ATSG Plus remote controller. I'm not sure how useful these scroll buttons are and I never used them actually before and probably these are more useful for controlling gimbals, so it's not so useful for flying racing quadcopters. Next we can see that the T8SG doesn't have any option for a sound model upgrade option, whereas it's present on the V2 and the T8SG Plus. So just to let you know, even though we can see over here this holes for the speakers, by default it doesn't come with any speaker, and you will have to install it by yourself, even on the more expensive version. Next we can find that the T8SG has standard gimbals, which is probably the biggest disadvantage of the T8SG V1, because the gimbals doesn't feel so great, they feel like regular gimbals, which they are. However, on the T8SG Plus we can find whole sensor gimbals, these are more precise and advanced gimbals, so it's going to give you a better feel, and later in this video I'm going to head outdoors and see how these gimbals feel. On the T8SG V2 you don't get any whole sensor gimbals, but you're getting upgraded gimbals, which should be better than the T8SG V1, but I haven't tested them myself. Another difference is that the maximum channels on the V1 is 10, whereas on the V2 and the V2 Plus, the maximum number of channels is 12. And finally, the last difference is that the T8SG V1 and the V2 are using a 1.7 LCD screen, whereas the T8SG V2 Plus is using a 2.42 inch OLED screen. So here you can see how the screens look next to each other and all the menus are the same, you can see here, but of course it's bigger on the T8SG Plus screen because it's using a bigger screen and also the screen is more readable. Besides that you can see that the layout of the remote controller has been changed. You can see that instead of using a switch for powering on and off the transmitter, the T8SG Plus and also the V2 version are using this button over here. And the V2 version looks the same as the Plus version, so the updated layout of the T8SG Plus is also applicable to the V2 version. Another difference between the V1 and the V2 and the T8SG Plus versions is the battery compartment. You can see that on the V1 we have this small compartment for the battery, which is not so easy to use, and also it's not very convenient to open it up 
and close it down, whereas it has been updated on both V2 and Plus versions, so it opens up like that. Then you can use the same batteries just like the V1, so the walking voltage is between 4.5 to 18 volts, and Jumper recommend to use 2S batteries. In addition, they also include this four AA battery bay, so you can just use AA batteries, place it inside like that, and then you'll be able to operate your remote controller. Besides the two position switches that are located on the sides of the V2 and Plus versions, we can find also this micro USB port, which unfortunately will not enable you to connect it to a flight simulator and will only enable you to update the firmware of the remote controller. It's not present on the V1, I think that it's present internally, but now it is much easier and more accessible when it's located over here. In order to use it with Flight Simulator, you have, of course, an option to use Betaflight 3.5, which is probably the easiest way, but you can also purchase an adapter that will use the PPM port, which is located on both remote controllers over here, and I'm going to put a link to this adapter in the description box down below. In terms of dimensions, the T8SG Plus has very similar proportions to the T8SG V1, however, it's a little bit heavier and weighs about 392 grams without the batteries, and the T8SG is lighter and weighs about 343 grams. However, the weight difference is not that noticeable, and from my experience so far, the T8SG is very comfortable to hold in the hands. The next thing that I've done is to bind my Gepper C Phoenix to the T8SG Plus transmitter. The Gepper C Phoenix is using the Sky XM Plus receiver, which is using the D16 protocol. In order to bind it, you will have to go to the model menu, model setup, then select the appropriate protocol. If you're using D16 Sky protocol, you will have to choose Sky X. You can also enter the settings of the protocol by pressing the enter button, and then you can choose these options. For example, you can choose between the EU and the FSC versions. Then you will have to hit bind. Put your transmitter on binding mode and connect the battery and you should be good to go. And after that you will have to go to beta flight and make sure that all the sticks are working correctly, the same as with other radio transmitters. So you can see, after setting up everything correctly, I defined this switch as my R switch. And you can see that the quadcopter is working. So now I'm going to head outdoors and take it for a test flight and I'll see you in the end of this video in order to give you my conclusion.
So overall, I can tell you that the Plus version definitely feels better than the T80G V1. The whole sensor gimbals make a difference and I felt much more precise flying it with the Plus version than using the normal gimbals of the V1. The biggest problem of the Plus version is that it's a little bit expensive. Priced at around $140 makes it more expensive than the Taranis QX7 and it's almost the same price as the underground FEB Nirvana which I'm currently testing. However, this one does offer the multi-protocol solution so if you have different types of receivers this one will enable you to control them all and this is a major advantage. So I'm not sure if I'm going to recommend you to buy this remote controller as your main remote controller but buying this remote controller as a second remote controller is pretty great of course if you can afford spending $140 on a second remote controller because it's pretty compact and it's easier to carry it around and also having the ability to bind it with different types of receiver is a great option. So I'm also going to review the new T12 remote controllers from Jumper which are cheaper than the Plus version and they also offer the whole sensor gimbal solution so maybe the T12 remote controllers are going to offer a better value for money and soon I'm going to find out. As always I thank you for watching my video I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about any of these remote controllers feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.